If it wasn't for this one fatal flaw, the Apple AirPods Pro 2 would probably be the best over-the-counter hearing aids on the market. Hey guys, Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, I'm covering the one fatal flaw of the Apple AirPods Pro 2 hearing aid feature and the solution to fix it. On October 28th, 2024, Apple announced the release of their new iOS 18.1 update that essentially turned their AirPods Pro 2 into official over-the-counter hearing aids. Now, Apple has really been touting the ability of their AirPods to act as hearing aids using their transparency feature since 2021. But this update to 18.1 officially turned them into over-the-counter hearing aids according to the FDA guidelines. Now, if you would like to check out my full detailed review video of using the AirPods Pro 2 as hearing aids, I will have that video linked in the description as well as my tutorial video to set the AirPods Pro 2 up as over-the-counter hearing aids. Now there are numerous pros of using the Apple AirPods Pro 2 as over-the-counter hearing aids, one of them being the low cost at only $249. This makes the Apple AirPods Pro 2 some of the cheapest over-the-counter hearing aids that money can buy. The in-situ hearing test that you take with your Apple iPhone while wearing the AirPods Pro 2 hearing aids is pretty accurate at identifying your hearing loss thresholds as well. From an accessibility standpoint, these are some of the easiest devices to get your hands on. You either go into an Apple store or you just order them online. They are extremely comfortable to wear for most individuals and their Bluetooth streaming is second to none. In fact, full disclosure here, I am a huge fan of the Apple AirPods Pro 2. I actually own several pairs of them. I also own pairs of the AirPods Pro, the original AirPods, and the AirPods 3. And this is all coming from someone who is actually a Android user. But everything is not perfect when it comes to the AirPods Pro 2, especially when you're going to use them as hearing aids. And some of these things include the short battery life, the incompatibility with Android phones for the hearing aid feature, the lack of hearing aid functionality in countries other than the United States, lack of support from Apple employees, they may make your own voice sound really weird while you talk, and some people will perceive you as rude if you leave them in your ears during conversations with them. However, most of these negatives are relatively minor and they shouldn't prevent you from using the AirPods Pro 2 as over-the-counter hearing aids if you're a good candidate for them. But there is one negative that I consider to be the fatal flaw of the Apple AirPods Pro 2 as hearing aids, but before I share what that flaw is, do me a huge favor and click the like button. It really helps out my channel because it gets these videos in front of a broader audience. And while you're at it, make sure that you hit that subscribe button with notification bell so you receive a notification every single time I publish a new video. And let me know down in the comments section if you are successfully using Apple AirPods Pro 2 as over-the-counter hearing aids to help out your fellow video viewers who might be considering them. Okay, so when it comes to receiving benefit from prescription hearing aids or over-the-counter hearing aids, it all hinges on one main thing, and that is audibility of sound. What do I mean by audibility? Essentially, I'm talking about a hearing aid's ability to amplify sound enough to overcome your hearing loss. When we look at an audiogram that is obtained during a hearing test, we can see how much hearing loss you have at each of the frequencies that are being tested, which is often between 250 hertz and 8,000 hertz. The further down you see the X's and O's on this graph, the worse your hearing is, and the louder sounds need to be in decibels at these frequencies before you can hear them. This creates a situation where you lose access to speech information unless you apply enough amplification to these sounds in these frequency ranges to replace them. If you do not apply enough amplification at the specific frequencies of your hearing loss, these speech sounds will remain inaudible. If you provide too much amplification at these frequencies or other frequencies that you do not have a hearing loss in, speech can become too loud, unclear, or even distorted. If you do not properly restore the optimal amount of audibility with a hearing aid, then that hearing aid will not be effective for you no matter how good the hearing aid is. So what is the fatal flaw of the Apple AirPods Pro 2 hearing aids? Well, that fatal flaw is their inability to amplify sound adequately to give you optimal audibility in their first fit settings. Now, what do I mean when I say first fit settings? Basically what I'm saying is, is that when you do the hearing test inside of your iPhone and it gives you an estimate of how much amplification it wants to apply to overcome your hearing loss, those settings are never accurate. Essentially, the Apple AirPods Pro 2 are horrible at giving you the right amount of amplification to restore optimal audibility. How do we know this? 
because we can actually measure it using something called real ear measurement. Real ear measurement is a tool that some audiologists use to verify that a hearing aid is amplifying sound properly to restore optimal audibility for someone's specific hearing loss. We essentially place probe microphone tubes into the user's ear canal along with the hearing aid that we are evaluating, in this case, the AirPods Pro 2. We then play a calibrated sound from a speaker in front of the user and measure the amount of amplification they're receiving from the hearing aids inside of their ear canal which is then displayed on a computer screen. The goal is to identify if the amplification levels of a hearing aid is enough to match hearing loss prescriptive targets that are calculated based off of your audiogram thresholds. And let me show you what we typically see when we do this verification measure with a pair of Apple AirPods Pro 2 after taking a hearing test for a mild to moderate hearing loss. To orient you with what we're looking at, the turquoise hash mark line is the prescription for this individual's mild to moderate hearing loss going from the low frequencies on the left side of the graphs to the high frequencies on the right hand side of the graphs. The solid turquoise line indicates the amount of amplification this individual is receiving from the AirPods Pro 2 when measured inside of their ear canals. Ideally you would want the solid line to overlap with the hash mark line as closely as possible, which would mean that you are restoring proper audibility of sound for optimal hearing performance. Anywhere the solid line is below the hash mark line, you are being under amplified. Anywhere the solid line is above the hash mark line, you would be over amplified. As you can see there is a significant under amplification of the high frequency ranges which means we're not restoring optimal audibility of the consonant sounds which would result in a lack of speech clarity and severe lack of ability to understand speech in a background noise situation. Unfortunately, this is a chronic issue that we consistently measure with the Apple AirPods Pro 2 setup as hearing aids, and we're not the only people to identify this. This finding was also identified by HearAdvisor, which is an independent third-party hearing aid testing lab. Their initial testing of the AirPods Pro 2 showed a significant under-amplification of sound above 630 hertz when in these initial first fit settings. And keep in mind, we are trying to reach up to 8,000 hertz. This resulted in an initial performance score of only 3.3, with terrible performance when it came to speech and quiet, and one of the worst scores ever recorded by HearAdvisor of just 0.8 out of 5 in speech and noise testing. So what does this mean to you as a current or future potential Apple AirPods Pro 2 over-the-counter hearing aid user? Well, it basically means that you cannot receive the full amount of benefit from the AirPods Pro 2 hearing aid feature if you do not have them custom programmed the right way. I know Shocker, right? I mean, an audiologist telling you that you need to properly program even your over-the-counter hearing aids if you want them to work correctly. I mean, why wouldn't an audiologist tell you to go see another audiologist, right? But let me show you why. If we manipulate the settings that are available inside of the Apple iPhone hearing aid section, we can significantly improve the audibility of the AirPods Pro 2 as indicated by the solid green curve matching the Hashmark green curve. While it still is imperfect, when these custom adjustments are made while performing real ear measurements, we can significantly improve the audibility of sound, which has a massive impact on your overall performance with these devices. Yes, now you have an audiologist telling you that you may be able to get some benefit out of the AirPods Pro 2 after all. These findings were also confirmed by HearAdvisor after they tuned the Apple AirPods Pro 2 using real ear measurement to better match prescriptive targets and optimize audibility as much as possible. And look what it did to the performance ratings going from 1.8 to a 3.8 out of 5 for speech and quiet, and from a 0.8 to 2.6 out of 5 for speech and noise, which I'll admit still isn't that good compared to most prescription hearing aids that have scored as high as 4.6 in speech and noise, but it is still significantly better than the 0.8 score on the initial first fit settings. And the overall score of the AirPods Pro 2 even improved from a 3.3 to a highly respectable 4.5. Of course, realer measurement had no impact on the own voice score of the AirPods Pro 2 because after all that has a lot more to do with the occluding nature of the rubber ear tip that you use on the AirPods Pro 2 that you just cannot get rid of. But as you can see, the fatal flaw of the Apple AirPods Pro 2, which is the limited audibility that you get on their initial first fit settings, can be almost completely remedied if you go to a hearing care professional who performs real ear measurement on them. Of course, you'll have to pay for that service, and that service will probably cost you significantly more than what you paid for the AirPods Pro 2. But wouldn't that be completely worth it if you could actually get benefit out 
out of the AirPods Pro 2 instead of them just being glorified Bluetooth earbuds, which I guess is the entire intent of these before they release the hearing aid feature. Now at this point, you're probably wondering where you can actually go to find a hearing care professional who performs real ear measurement. And I would highly recommend that you check out my website, hearingup.com and finding a hearing up network member in your area. Hearing up members are committed to following comprehensive audiologic best practices, including real ear measurement to ensure that you are receiving the maximum amount of benefit from whatever hearing aids you use, including the AirPods Pro 2. So if you want to avoid the fatal flaw of the AirPods Pro 2, do yourself a favor and reach out to a hearing up network member. At the end of the day, if you're looking for a low cost way to get some hearing benefit using an over the counter hearing aid, you can potentially get that benefit using the AirPods Pro 2 as long as they are programmed correctly using real ear measurement. I should also mention though, that if you have these programmed properly and you go into noisy environments and you do not do that well, that is a clear sign that you need to move on from over the counter hearing aids and step up to a prescription level hearing aid. Just keep in mind that even the most expensive prescription hearing aids have the exact same fatal flaw as the AirPods Pro 2 unless you have them fit and programmed using real ear measurement.